before we start, just want to wish everybody Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays. Um, it was that, that game went down to the wire. Obviously, it was a hard-fought four-quarter battle, and like I told our team, we'll never apologize for winning in this league. And I know it wasn't the prettiest of victories, but ultimately, we did enough as a team to to win. Uh, a lot to learn from from. It really in all three phases, and us as coaches as well. Uh, I got to give Cleveland a lot of credit. I thought the, their guys battled; they were well prepared, uh, and, and it made it a, a very exciting game that came down right to the end. All right, go ahead, Matt Schneiman. Hey, Matt. Merry Christmas. Um, Aaron and Devonte both just said that they felt you guys kind of let up in the second half a little bit. Do you think that? the offense was too conservative and and why do you think that was in that game well yeah i know what you're talking about obviously um you know i thought we started out with a really nice drive went down and and weren't able to convert had to kick a field goal or settle for a field goal um and then i want to say the next drive started out with we tried in a, uh, a reverse or in a round and we lost 10 yards and so when you're in second and 20 that's usually a pretty tough situation to overcome through an incomplete pass. And then we basically tried a, a little shallow screen to Devonte that got like nine yards or whatever, and, and we ha were forced to punt. But there was that series in the fourth quarter where Ben Braden came in the game and, and, you know, we have a lot of confidence in Ben. It had nothing to do with him. It was more or less just the matchup with him on, on Garrett. I uh, just wanted to give him an opportunity to try to get his feet wet a little bit probably was too conservative there. Uh, certainly, I think there were some things that we could have done with especially that second down call where we ran um, an inside run, a downhill gap scheme play where we, we need our receiver to short motion in and, and insert on the safety, and he was able to make the play. That brought it to third and short, called a play that I thought had an opportunity to work. And, you know, when it, when it doesn't work and you got three straight runs and you're going three and out, that, that can get frustrating for guys, especially guys like uh, Aaron and Devante that are the best at their positions. Um, and I never want to take the ball out of their hands and, and certainly got a lot of confidence in those guys. And so, yeah, you could argue that we should have been a little bit more aggressive there. Mike Spofford. Matt, how do you, how do you assess the, the performance of the defense or how do you feel about it overall? On the one hand, you get obviously the key turnovers and, and some timely sacks. On the other hand, stopping the run was was a huge struggle for you. So how, how do you feel coming out of this? I, I think there's a lot of mixed feelings, I would say. Uh, the splash plays are great, obviously. The difference in the game was the four turnovers um, and, and the five sacks. But I would say just down in and down out, we have to be more consistent and make sure that, that we're doing a better job in the run game. Now, you have to give Cleveland a ton of credit. Obviously, Nick Chubb is one of the premier backs in this league. Um, and and number 30 as well. Like, both those guys ran really hard. And and they got a good front. They got, they do a good job up front. They got a really good offensive line. I, I got a lot of respect um, for their coaching staff and putting those guys in positions to have success. I know Bill Callahan, he's one of the, the top in the business um, and been doing it at a high level for a, a really long time. Obviously, uh, you know, Stefanski does a great job calling the plays. And so you got to give them credit. But absolutely, do I think we need to be better? No doubt about it. We got to do a better job of setting the edge. Um, and we got to do a better job of tackling. That was probably our worst performance tackling this season. Hey, Doherty. Hey, Matt. Uh, we're really getting to crunch time here. Uh, for the season, I'm wondering um, what have you been doing or what do you plan on doing for the next few weeks to uh, minimize the chances that COVID costs you a game? Yeah, that's that's tough, Pete, because um, it certainly is affecting our football team. Obviously, it had a profound effect on Cleveland and it has been. Um, it's just trying to mitigate all risks in terms of what what you you can only really control what goes on inside your building obviously you talk to your team about trying to not put themselves in positions to get this but quite frankly i've talked to many people that have no idea how they could have gotten it and it's just it's one of those things like how does somebody catch a cold i i, I don't know i mean 
it, it's just out there right now and it's running rampant and it's obviously a real problem it's a problem in all sports it's a problem in society it just is what it is and um you know the only thing we can do is is just try to be as responsible as possible outside of here try to mask up when we're in the facility try to space out when we're in the facility um but yeah there's it, it is kind of a little bit of a helpless feeling because um you know, it just, you, you just don't know how people can get it. Jason Moldy. Hey, Matt, look, all, all quarterbacks have their ups and downs, um, except maybe the one that you have. How different is it for you to have a guy that you just, you know, he's not going to make the backbreaking mistakes. You know, he's not going to put you in a bad spot. It, is that just, I understand he's a great player. I get it. But that he's just not going to make the mistakes that can get you in real trouble in a game. Yeah, he does an unbelievable job, and he's been doing it that way his whole career. Uh, certainly, the trust that we have in him, it's hard not to throw the ball every snap. And um, I try to fight that urge, uh, despite what some of the some of the calls tonight. And um, But, you know, because I do think that we're best when, when there is a little bit of balance there. And, and, you know, you just try to keep the defense a little bit honest. Um in regards to whether or not you're going to throw it or pass it or throw it or run it. And, um, you know, we're fortunate to have a guy like him that is able to make not only the decisions, but just throw with such accuracy. It's, it's unbelievable. Bill Huber. Hey Matt, um, obviously you go from, from Dave to Elton and then Elton, Elton, Yash, I would, I would think it'd be a challenge for you, but how is your, your game planning and, and play calling evolved um, the more games that Yash has played for you because he's better and done a hell of a good job. Yeah, Yash has been big time for our team. He's done a, a, an outstanding job. I think, you know, you got to give a lot of credit to many different people. I, I think our offensive staff does a, a great job game planning. I think, um, you know, I've said it many times, Sten Steno and Buckus do a great job of helping our players get prepared. But also it, it comes down to the players and that, their ability – to take whatever it is you're giving them and go out there and execute. And uh, it's not just Josh. It, it takes all 11, uh, like we all know. And those guys consistently do a great job. Josh, I'm, I'm super proud of him. Uh, just the work he puts in on a daily basis, his approach to the game, and how much it means to him. And it's evident. Before each game, always go up to him. Um, he cares about this a lot, and that's why he puts so much time and effort into it. Brian Wood. Obviously a big moment for Aaron tonight, 443. I'm curious, as the coach on the sideline, what was that moment like for you? Yeah, I, I got chills when uh, when that happened. I thought the, the tribute to him was, was outstanding. Um, you know, hearing from Brett Favre, having his message. Um, it was just a great moment, and I'm really, really happy that on top of that moment that we were able to come away with a win. Aaron Nagler. Coach, what did you think you saw on that first challenge, or did you get bad info from upstairs? <laughs> I'll never put, point that finger, Aaron. Um, you know, I think we saw, uh, we thought we saw the ball hit the ground, but in, in hindsight, uh, there was one angle that absolutely clearly showed that that was – that was the correct call. There was there was no ball that ever that touched the ground. Tom Silverstein. Hey Matt, you know uh, last week I think inside the ten yard line you had the play where ten guys you only had ten guys on the field and then you get down there near the end of the game and you don't have a guy lined up over the slot. What, how frustrating is that for you since I know you talked about it during this past week? And then the other thing is, are you do they need to condition someone to call timeouts during those situations? You know, I, Tom, I, I thought about calling timeout in that in that situation. Um, I was hoping that we would communicate a little bit better, a little bit quicker, and get and get the call in and and get our guys aligned because you never want to see that. Um, certainly, they they didn't even throw it to the guy that was uncovered, which was uh, I was a little bit shocked at, but. Um, yeah, th those are very frustrating because those are self-inflicted wounds that 
tend to get you beat. And certainly there's a lot to clean up in that regard. And we have got to be better in those situations when people get chunk plays and then they jump the ball. And I know we're gassed, but like we always talk about around here, there's no excuses. Uh, give Cleveland credit. They took advantage of the situation and, and they made us pay. Mark Daniels. Hey, Matt, you got me? I got you, Mark. So give me your best. How does a guy come here October 6th and turn into a Pro Bowl alternate, lead this team with five <laughs> picks, three game-saving plays? That's a hell of a question, Mark. Uh, you know, he's just a guy. Not only does it on defense, but you guys see on that first kickoff, he's running down there and making a play. I just think that, that speaks to the competitor, competitor that Sewell is. Um, he's a guy that we can consistently count on to go out there, give great effort, compete to the highest of levels, and do his job. And we are very, very fortunate to find a guy like that because that I've never seen anything like this. I know in my time in the, in the National Football League where somebody that comes in midseason has had such a tremendous impact on, on your football team. Um, I love what he's all about. I love how he competes. Uh, I love his approach on a daily basis. I don't think there's anybody that m might not be anybody on our team that watches more tape than him. He just is constantly grinding, working at it, and I think it's paying off for him. And I think it's a great lesson for, for every player in this league. If you put the time in, it's going to pay big dividends, and it has for him and it has for us. So we are very fortunate to have Sewell, um, and I just – I can't say enough great things about him. Rachel Hotmeyer. Hey, Matt. Merry Christmas. Um, what about the second challenge there? Are you frustrated that wasn't ultimately ruled a catch? Did you regret using that and losing a timeout? Yeah, Merry Christmas to you as well. Um, yeah, I think every time that you challenge something, you're, you, you want it to go your way. Certainly uh, losing the timeout was a big deal. That was part of the thought process, I think, you know, like we just talked about when our defense wasn't aligned late in the game and they got the touchdown of, of not trying to burn a, another timeout, you know, and have Aaron come and attack me again. Um, but, uh, no, it's just, yeah, I think, you know, you, you never quite know. I, we thought he caught it, but I'd have to go back and, and really look at it again. Um, you know, I, I, I'm guessing they, they ruled it inconclusive, but, um, you know, I got to go back and watch it. Matt Schneiman. Matt, with Rasul, look, you guys have like a million different transactions during the season. And I'm sure some pique your interest more than others. But when did he like first catch your eye? What was your initial reaction to seeing you guys just grabbed a, your sixth cornerback off the Cardinals practice squad? And when did you first kind of realize, oh, OK, we, we might have a little something here? Well, it didn't take long. Um you know, certainly he, he got activated pretty quickly and, um, you know, made a positive impact. And, you know, it was one of those things that we were battling with in terms of how much does he play and then he keeps making plays and he makes – and it, it it's consistently shown itself. And so, again, just that's a great job by Goody and his staff finding a guy like that of that caliber at that point in the season that obviously just – didn't get enough of, of an opportunity in Arizona, and, and we're, we're benefiting from it, and we're very fortunate for that. Jason Wilde. Hey, Matt, I, I had another question, but can I just quickly clarify on that second challenge? Your, your challenge record is actually really good. I don't know if I've ever seen you that indecisive about whether you wanted to throw it or not. Was that – did you just keep going back and forth with what you were seeing on the scoreboard, or, or why were you that way? I would say it was a combination of a lot of things. Um, I, to be honest with you, I couldn't totally tell on the screen um, or on the scoreboard whether or not he caught it. And then, you know, just hearing some information from upstairs, we, we felt like he caught it. But uh, that's why it went down as late as it did. I mean, that, was, that would have been a big play, an explosive play. And um, so we felt like it was worth the risk. And unfortunately it didn't work out for us so just the, what i was really wondering was 
you know, we've we've talked a lot about the things that weren't up to your standard tonight, but you're still 12 and three. And there have been other teams in your position that have lost games like this. So is there any good that comes from the fact that despite all the stuff you're not necessarily happy with, you didn't lose the game like some other teams that are contenders in your conference did? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, like I said in the opening, we'll never apologize for winning games. And you'd rather learn from your your bad plays or your mistakes after a win than after a loss. Because after a loss, obviously, that, that can have devastating effects. And, um, you know, I think our guys take the right mindset with that. And we'll be better for it. And, then, again, we'll, we'll all collectively as a group, offense defense special teams coaches everybody look at the film hard and you know do some good uh self-evaluation and you know improve from it